Hi everyone, we'll be discussing Rosemary Rizzo Parsi, War Group 2. Uh, Rosemary was educated at Duquesne University of Pittsburgh, a uh, master degree and doctorate degree from University of Pittsburgh, published her theory of nursing man living health in 1981, and in 1992, he, she officially changed uh, to human becoming. Uh, editor and founder of Nursing Science Quarterly, has published nine books and hundreds of articles about human becoming theory. Professor and NAHOF Chair at Loyola, Loyola University of Chicago has been given two Lifetime Achievement Awards, uh, one from the Midwest uh, Nursing Research Society and one from the Asian American Pacific Islander Nurses Association, recipient of New York Times Nurse Educator of the Year Award. The Theory of Human Becoming guides nurses in their practice to focus on quality of life as it is described and live an alternative to both the conventional biomedical approach and the biopsychosocial spiritual but still normative approach to most other theories of nursing. Paul sets quality of life from each person's own perspective as the goal of nursing practice. The name was officially, officially changed to the human becoming theory in 1992 to remove the term man after the change in the dictionary uh, definition of the word from its former meaning humankind. The human becoming theory was developed as a human science nursing theory in the tradition of Dilthey, uh, Heidegger, Sarthe, Margot Ponte, and Gadamar, and Science of Unitary Human Beings by Martha Rogers. The assumptions underpinning the theory were synthesized from works by the European philosophers Heidegger, Sarthe, and Mario Ponte, along with the works by the pioneer American nurse theorist Martha Rogers. Hi, Rosemary developed the assumptions of theory of human becoming. Human with the universe is coexisting while co-constituting rhythmical patterns. Human is open, freely choosing meaning with the situation, bearing responsibility for decisions. Human is continually co-constituting patterns. Human is transcending illimitably with possibles. Rosemary Parsi's assumption is continued with becoming is human living health, becoming is rhythmically co-constituting human universe, becoming is the human's value priority patterns, becoming is transcending with the possibles, becoming is the human's emerging. Apart from the assumptions, the Rosemary made some principles. The principle that emerged from assumptions, first one is structuring meaning is the imaging and valuing of language that is meaning second one is configuring rhythmical patterns is the revealing concealing and enabling limiting of connecting separating that is rhythmicity the third one is co-transcending with the possibilities is the powering and originating of transforming that is transcendence okay so the first principle is meaning wherein all people construct a unique view of the world in light of what is becoming visible to them with their invisible becoming. And second is that it indicates the significance of something and is chosen by people. First of all, meanings are shared with others when people express their views, concerns, hopes, and dreams. And meaning is connected with moments of day-to-day -day living as well as with the meaning of purpose of life. And persons structure or choose the meaning of realities and this choosing happens with explicit tacit knowing. So there are three concepts of meaning. The first one is imaging. Um, paradoxes of imaging are explicit tacit and reflective, pre-reflective is an individual's view of reality. It is shaping of personal knowledge in explicit and tacit ways, and a personal interpretation of meaning, possibility, and consequence. And the second concept of meaning is valuing. It is a process of choosing and embracing what is important. It embraces the paradox confirming, not confirming. And it is about how persons confirm and do not confirm beliefs in light of a personal perspective or worldview. And for parse, leaving one's value 
priorita priorities is how an individual expresses health and human becoming. The third concept of meaning is languaging. Um, the paradoxes of languaging are speaking being silent and moving being still. It suggests that people tell and do not tell things in their patterns of speaking and moving and during times when they keep quiet and remain still. It is a way of expressing meaning to and with others in the many situations that constitute daily living. Her second principle, rhythmicity. Cooperate in the creation of rhythmic pattern of relationship means leaving the paradoxical unit of revealing, concealing, enabling, limiting, and at the same time joining, separating. Means that living paradox encompasses apparent opposite experience that coexist in rhythmical patterns. And human beings create pattern in day-to-day -day life and these patterns tell about personal meaning and values. Uh, there are three concepts uh, of rhythmicity. First one, revealing, concealing. It concerns the ways individual disclosed and do not disclose meanings, thoughts, feelings, values, concern, and hopes. First connects revealing, concealing to the mystery of humans and uh, to reality that people are never fully re revealed. There is always more to know about others and more to discover. And people also disco disclose, not disclose differently in different situations and with different people. Uh, her second concept of rhythmicity, enabling and uh, limiting. It is about choice, consequence, and discovery. Concerned the choices people make moment to moment and the inherent opportunities and limitation that accompany those personal choices. The last concept of rhythmicity, connecting and separating. Concerned the ways people can be with others while at the same time being separate from them or how people can be together without being in the same location. Uh, embracing a particular idea and at the same time separating from that idea. And sometimes there is connecting when people are separating because person can deal with an absent present with a great intimacy, especially when grieving for another. The third principle is transcendence. It introduces ideas about change, struggle, and transcendence. It focuses on how humans create themselves while moving with their hopes and dreams. The meaning of this principle is that persons continuously change and unfold in life as they engage with and choose from infinite possibilities about how to be, what attitude and approach to have, whom to relate with, and what interests and concerns to explore. There are three concepts of transcendence. First is powering. The, it is the pushing resisting process that propels people in life. It's to risk losing something of value or even one's life. Powering involves the way people consider the possibilities that lie ahead and how they choose to go on and find a way to be with situations. The second is originating. It is about human uniqueness and the ways pe people create their own becoming as they choose from all the possibles that could be. People strive to be like others while simultaneously striving to be unique and different from others. Originating is known through the unique choices people make when facing alternatives and the consequences of those choices. Third concept is transforming. It represents a process of deliberately shifting one's patterns of health. It is in the ongoing change co-created as the new information and insights become visible in the emerging now 
as people find ways to change in the direction of their cherished hopes and dreams. Nurses guided by human becoming prepare to be present with others through focused attentiveness on the moment at hand and through immersion. These principles prepares the nurse to be truly present with the person, family, or group. Nurses have opportunities to be with others and participate with them during times of change, struggle, upset, uncertainty, recovery, and hope. And nurses invite individuals to speak about their situations. And nurses has the privilege of being present to serve others. And nurses' participation with others make a difference to people. So there are meta-paradigm concepts according to PARS. The first one is the person environment. Person is a living unity who through an open interchange with the environment co-creates rhythmical patterns. Second is the health, an open process of becoming experienced by man, a commitment and expression of life values reflective in personal choosings. And the third one is nursing. It is the application of the theoretical base of nursing in promoting health or quality of life. And this is the symbol of human becoming theory. The black and white opposite paradox significant to ontology of human becoming and green is hope. And the center joint, which means co-created mutual human universe process at the ontological level and nurse person process. And the green and black which means it swirls intertwining human universe co-creation as an ongoing process of becoming. This is the scenario that we are going to role play that depicts the theory in the clinical practice. Melanie is an 18 year old and is three months pregnant. Her boyfriend left her after knowing the situation. Her family is not in favor of her pregnancy so they forced her to abort her pregnancy. But she insisted to continue and consider the possibility of giving her baby for adoption. During her prenatal checkup, she verbalized her concerns regarding her situation. Client assessment. The subjective data is the patient verbalized that, I don't know what to do. My family wants me to give up my baby to someone else, but I want to keep it. And the objectives data are the patient looks worried, uneasy, and crying. Client goals. Melanie will be able to structure the meaning of her situation. She will be able to determine what she wants, and she will be able to gain insights that might be helpful in her situation. Nursing interventions and rationale. First is establish rapport to gain the client's trust. Second, explore what Melanie thinks that will help with her situation. It gives us an overview of her situation and provides insights. Third, explore her desire to keep the baby. It is to understand her feelings, values, and wishes. Fourth, explore Melanie's plan for adoption to guide her with decisions and assist her in her planning. And last, ask topics that she wants to know more about. It is to provide additional information, sources, and support, and to, cl to clarify doubts and concerns. Last is the client's evaluation. The client can be able to express her feelings and concerns. The client is able to decide what is best for her situation, and that she gain knowledge and information to help her in decision making. Hi, Melanie. I'm Maria. I'm your nurse today. How are you feeling? I'm not too good. I don't know what to do. Can you tell me more about it? It's just my family wants me to avoid the baby, but for me, I think it's a crime and I want to go through with it and just put the baby for adoption. And that's so, what made you change your mind? Um, because I'm thinking that the adoptive parents might not be good for my baby. Oh, okay. So you're thinking that they might not be good to your baby. So just so you know, adoptive parents are screened. They have to undergo a lot of processes to become qualified as um, adoptive parents. Okay, that's good to know. But if I keep my baby, how will I be able to provide? I'm still young 
I don't have job and I'm still going to school. Oh, okay. So just so you know, um, the government gives child benefit. So in your case, since you don't have source of income, you might be able to get to get the full benefit. Really? Yeah, yeah. And then we can refer you to the social worker who can um, help you to get support from the community. Um, I'm thinking that I'm too young, right? Um, will I be able to produce breast milk? Oh, that's a good question. So there are a lot of techniques that we can teach you to induce breast milk. Uh, it's just I have a lot of things in my mind. So if I keep the baby, how will I be able to feed her or him? Um, I can't afford any formula milk. Oh, okay. So what other working mothers do is that they express breast milk as much as they could and they store it in their freezer and it lasts 6 to 12 months. Wow, that's good to know. Um, but it's just my family doesn't not want me to keep the baby. Um, if I keep the baby, they might abandon me or throw me out of the house. And I want to talk to my boyfriend first about the situation. Oh, okay. So what are the reasons why your family that don't want to keep the baby? Um, because maybe I'm too young and that we can't afford another mouth to feed. Like, we don't have oh. money. So um, by this time, with all the information I give you, when you go home, what will you tell them? Um, maybe I will tell them that I still want to keep the baby and I will tell them that I have plans and that I will talk to my boyfriend about this and maybe look for a job. Okay. So about your boyfriend, what will you tell him when you see him? Um, I won't ask him to come back to me. Um, maybe I just need him to give me his financial support for our baby. Just like that. If he, wasn't, he doesn't want me. Okay, it seems that you have a plan now. So do you have any other concerns, Melanie, that you want to be clarified? No, thank you. I'm um, all good and your advice are good. Um, I will see you next this next appointment. Yes, okay. I'll see you then. Thank you. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Maria. How are you doing today? I'm good, doing good. Oh, you seem well. Yes. Okay, so how is everything? Well, um, I talked to my family and they agreed to keep the baby. Oh, that's good. And uh, I'm going to look for a job mm -hmm. and so I can be able to provide for my baby. Okay. And so that's it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's good to know. And how about your boyfriend? Well, I talked to my boyfriend, but since we're young and he said that he doesn't have a job, so we talked to his parents and they agreed to give me some financial support for the baby. Wow, that's great news. Yeah. It seems that your plan went well. Yes. And uh, I think Yes, thank you so much for your help. Mm, okay, no, you are welcome. You are welcome and actually it's not uh, me who helped you. It's actually you who helped yourself. I just guided you with your plan. Actually. Thank you. Yeah, okay, so till we meet again. Yes. Okay, bye. Thank you. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening.